For further analysis, let's cross over to Ross Feingold, who is the former Asia chair of the Republicans Abroad. He joins us now live from uh, Taipei. Ross, good to have you on the show. Um, it is famously hard for, for a sitting president to sort of uh, maintain uh, an advantage, even more so during uh, a, a cost of living crisis. So it wouldn't be that much of a surprise if the Republicans gained control of either the House or Senate or both. That's correct. And you know, there's ample uh, evidence from many past elections and many midterms, uh, whether it's in the president's first term or if a president has a second term and faces a second midterm. Well, one of the interesting things about President Trump's uh, four years in office, his one term, was in the 2018 midterm election, uh, President Trump or the Republicans, they, they lost control of the House. But actually, uh, versus historical patterns, they didn't lose that many seats. They lost enough so that control shifted to the Democrats, but, but it was a relatively modest loss. And then in 2020, the Democrats lost seats. It wasn't enough to lose control. But the interesting thing there is even though a Democrat did eventually win the White House uh, and the Democrats maintained control of the House, they still lost seats versus 2018. There's clearly a problem for the Democrats. Uh, they, they don't get their message out, whatever that message might be, or it's not resonating with uh, a sufficient number of voters. And, and actually, if we look at the map, the, the, there is another truth here, which is Democrat support really is in large urban areas. And there's vast parts of the United States where the Democrats really have great difficulty getting elected. Yeah. And, and that's been a, a historical sort of obstacle for, for the Democrats, as you say. Since you mentioned uh, Donald Trump in the 2018 elections, let me uh, ask you this. I mean, if the Republicans come out with, uh, with a red wave, I mean, do you think it'd be a safe bet for, for Donald Trump to come out after these elections and actually officially announce that he's you know, thrown his hat into the race for the 2024 elections? Well, he sort of teased at that in one of the final rallies before uh, Election Day today, where he said he's going to have a big announcement uh, next week. And the you know, speculation is that he will formally announce his candidacy or he could announce something else. You know, Donald Trump, uh, you know, we have to give him credit. He's very good at bringing media attention uh, to himself and to what, what message he wants to get across. And uh, frankly, he has... Uh, wide support uh, with about half the voting population in the United States. That's just a fact. Uh, if, if he declares this early that he's running for president, it won't surprise anyone. And also, uh, another thing to keep in mind here is uh, traditionally, this is actually the time when candidates do start announcing their candidacy. So typically after the midterm, okay. uh, right around Christmas uh, into the new year, January, February, because remember, January or February, we're already in a one year countdown to the first primaries in January 2024. So for candidates okay. to start to announce in December Ross. or January, not a surprise. He's accelerating it a bit. Ross, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you off. Thank you very much for joining us.